We're going to do some operations of functions. So, first operation of functions I want to go over with you guys is f plus g of x. Actually, I'm sorry. Let's do f minus g of x, or f minus g of x, which can also look like this. f of x minus g of x. Okay? So we're going to deal with adding and subtracting functions. Now, when we're dealing with adding and subtracting functions, you're basically just taking whatever the expression or the rule of one function, and you're subtracting from the rule of the other function. So in this case, we're having f of x minus g of x, which sometimes you'll see the notation written like this, which really just means this. Okay? So let's subtract them. Now, in your Algebra 2 days, this is now turned into a subtracting rational expressions. And hopefully you guys remember that subtracting rational expressions are just like subtracting fractions, where we can only subtract fractions if the denominators are the same. And in this problem, we see that they are not the same. So we have to find the least common denominator. Yes? Huh? It's three. Thank you. OK, so let's go back and kind of remember some things. Well, if I had 1 plus uh, 3 plus 1 plus 3, we know that's going to be 2 over 3, right? This is just a little sidebar, just to kind of go back and remember fractions. So if I had 1 over 3 plus 1 over 2, to get the common denominator, I basically got to say, what number does 3 and 2 both divide into? What's the smallest number that they both divide into? Which would be 6. So you'd multiply by 2 over 2 over here and 3 over 3 here. And you get uh, 2 over 6 plus 3 over 6, which equals 5 over 6. So the important thing is identifying the LCD, which is, in this case, is 6. Yes, this is a fraction just review, not pre-calculus review. So back to this. Now, finding numbers that 2 and 3 divide into is rather simple, guys. 2 divides into 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, right? Numbers that 3 divides into. It's pretty easy to do in your head. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, right? Even if I do x's, x's aren't bad either. x, x squared, x cubed, x to the fourth, x to the fifth, x to the sixth, right? We can keep on dividing into terms. Where it gets confusing is when we have expressions like x plus 1. What are the multiples of x plus 1? It kind of gets a little tricky, and your brain might kind of be working and like be like, eh, that doesn't really conceptually make as much sense as numbers or just the variable x. Could you guys at least, can we all agree on that? Yes. Okay? So the easy way to identify the LCD is just to multiply your two denominators, right? Notice when we multiplied 3 times 2, that gave us 6, which ended up being our LCD, correct? We know that it's not always the product that is their common denominator, right? 6 times 2 is 12, but 12 is not the common denominator, right? In reality, the lowest common denominator would be 6, because 6 divides into 6 and 2 divides into 6. However, for these tricky problems, the easiest thing to do to find the least common denominator is just to multiply them. So I'm going to write that down to the side so I don't forget it. The least common denominator is x plus 1, x minus 3. And just leave it in factored form. Don't need to multiply it out. Just leave it in factored form. So just like we did before, here I had to multiply by the other factor to get me my least common denominator. So here I'm going to multiply by the other factor on the top and the bottom. Did you guys follow? Yes? No? OK. Now. I really have negative 3 times x minus 3 all over x minus 3 times x plus 1 minus 2 times x plus 1 all over x minus 3 times x plus 1. Now, I can agree with you guys. This looks way more confusing than this example. However, are the denominators exactly the same? So as long as the denominators are exactly the same, our resultant, our you know, sum, is just going to be still the same denominator, and then we just apply the operation to the numerator. Okay. So now here you might want to say, well, how am I going to add these? Well, let's simplify this. So I'm going to apply distributive properties. So that's a negative 3x. Negative 3 times negative 3 is plus 9. This is really a negative 2. So it's negative 2x minus 2. Make sure you carry that when you multiply the 2. Make sure you remember it's a negative 2. 
And then that's all, all over x minus 3 times x plus 1. Okay, and then we can go ahead and simplify this to get our final answer. So therefore we'd have, if you owe me $3 and you borrow two more dollars, how much money do you have? You owe me $5, right? So negative 3x minus 2x is negative 5x. 9 minus 2 is a positive 7. All over x minus 3 times x plus 1. So that was your Algebra 2 review for you. Um, so we're going to add a little pre-calculus into this is what, have we, what did we practice on the first quiz that we did? We always learned how to find the d d domain, domain. So rather than multiplying this out, this is already in factored form. When we're trying to find the domain, when it's already in factored form, that's pretty nice, right? We kind of like that, correct? So if I wanted to find the domain, I got to figure out what values are going to make the denominator equal to 0. Well. I can just look by inspection and say x cannot equal 3 and x cannot equal negative 1. So my domain is going to be negative infinity to negative 1, union negative 1 to 3, union 3 to infinity. Just like your homework problem that I did, right? Kind of the same thing.